Okay, we're continuing our discussion on fluids. This is part two. Fluids in motion. Okay. Fluids in motion, right? Well, this is important. All, all you folks that are working in process technology, you're, you're going to have big pipes with oil flowing through and all kinds of other uh, chemicals as, as you, you work in the in the refineries and, and other uh, plants uh, in the area or, or other places. Nurses, nurses, right? Blood is a fluid that flows. The heart is a pump, right? Motion. Things flow from an area of greater to lesser. So, so things flow from, from, from greater temperature to lesser temperature, from, for, from a higher pressure to lower pressure, right? Heat, okay, so that's how fluids go. So when a pipe, there's some pressure and the things are moving, right? Or so there's some mechanism. In a stream, it's gravity. Force of gravity is why uh, water always flows downstream, right? Okay, we've all heard the term viscosity. Viscosity, right? A measure of the frictional effects within a fluid. What? <laughs> what is that? I thought viscosity was how thick it was, right? Like molasses or oil is has a larger viscosity, has more viscosity than water. Well, yeah, physicists, the measure of the fr frictional effect, effects within the fluid, right? Okay, yeah, well, you knew, you knew things were going to, you knew things like this were going to happen when you studied physics, right? We can't just leave it alone. The larger the viscosity, the larger the frictional forces between the different layers of the fluid. Oh no. There's friction in fluid? Yeah, you bet there is. Just like there's friction, right? On the surface, fluid has friction. Yeah, it's a stuff. When it flows, there's friction, right? So now here's just a term, right? The rate of flow. So water going through a pipe, it's the volume of water that's going, right? So say you have a pipe and it's about this big, right? So, so, so if the pipe is about this big, one gallon would be about this much. One, you know, and then gallons per minute. So it's how many gallons per minute are flowing through the pipe or liters, right? A liter would be you know, like a liter carton is about this high, maybe this much. So if you had a pipe like that, where, or liters per minute, if every minute one liter of water went through that pipe, right? So that is rate of flow, volume divided by time. Yeah, and here it just shows you have a pipe and there's a, a volume of water, right? The volume of water is going through. So you have the cross-sectional area, right? If it's a pipe, it would be a circle, right? If, you, if you're looking at the pipe down into the pipe, it would be a circle, right? And then if you have a, a hunk of pipe, so then the length of the pipe times the area of the circle, that's the volume of the pipe for that chunk, right? Okay? And then the rate is, is, is how much of that is flowing per unit time. And we'll do, we'll do, the, we'll do problems in another session. So now if you have a pipe and the, the flow is continuous, right? So you have a hose and the water's coming out, right? So, and, and it's just and you're using the hose and it's coming out, coming out, right? If the area decreases, the speed must increase. So say you're, you're washing a car, but your, your, your mischievous little brother has had, has, has had his foot, uh, not to, to stop the whole flow, but just a little bit on the hose, right? Decreasing the volume in that area. Somehow he constricted it or he tied a cord around it, right? Well, the flow is still the same, but in that little area where, where it was constricted, the volume, it's going to have to go faster. 
you know, a river, if a river is flowing where the river is wide, it's going to flow slowly. You can be peacefully in your raft, but then in a part where the river gets narrow, it's going to go, it's going to go faster, right? So this is at the flow rate for the whole, uh, for, for that whole part, you know, for that whole river is always constant the same, right? It's going to go faster in narrower parts. Uh, same with a pipe. If the flow of a pipe is, is constant, well, if the pipe is wider in some spots, it's going to go slower. But where it's constricted, it's going to go faster, increase velocity. But look at this about liquid. Let me check the camera. It's better I check the camera than I don't check the camera. All right, I think it's working. Oh. Um, so say you have a trough. Maybe this looks like a gutter that would be on the house, right? The rainwater is in it. Look at this. The velocity is actually slower at the bottom where it's touching the surface, also on the sides. So the velocity of a fluid is actually quicker where, where, where it's away from any surfaces. And that might seem strange to a lot of people. Some of you, you know, in a river, yeah, if you're right at the edge of a fast-flowing river, you could, you could get into the river a little bit up to your knees and not be swept away, right? But you know not to go too far, you're, you're going to get swept away, right? So it's a little bit like that, right? Right by the, right where the liquid is, is touching things, it's actually slower and it's quicker where it's just able to free flow. And, and because this, this liquid down here is slower, well, the liquid that's a little bit higher, it still can't go as fast as it wants to because it's slowed down by this. And as you go higher and higher, it's able to go faster because it's not impeded by the lowest levels. Oh no, physics is hard. No, it's fun. It's interesting. Yeah, and in a pipe, if you have a pipe, if you have a low viscosity, say water in a pipe, right? Well, the lower viscosity, you're going to have a little bit of friction on the sides, but and then the center is going to go at some rate, right? It's going to be going at a flow rate, but still slower uh, where, it's, where, where it's closer to the pipe or certainly where it touches the pipe. High viscosity, like a thick oil or molasses or honey or something like that, you have a lot more. This is why in the beginning we said there's, there's friction. That viscosity, there's friction. Oh, now I see it, right? So that's what they mean. So the center is going to go quicker, but a high viscosity, like a thicker fluid, right? It is. It's like it's 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 uh, impeded where it touches the surface, and then the, each layer impedes it more. Till finally you get to the center, right? Whereas a low viscosity, like water or alcohol, is just going to flow a lot easier. So that's viscosity, and that's what they mean when they say the frictional forces, right? Yeah, now, and then there's a couple of terms, laminar flow, turbulent flow. Laminar flow, if you're working in industry and other such things, it's often quite beneficial to have a nice, smooth flow of, of all the water molecules, right? They're just flowing through the pipe nice and, like, nice and smooth. It doesn't wear out the pipes. Pipes will wear out over time if you have a lot of friction, right, in, in bends and corners and stuff. It, it just kind of flows. If you have a turbulent flow, that can be inefficient because the water is going down, but it's all, it's, it's, it's also going in, the molecules are going in different directions. So you can see where it's preferable in industry to have a laminar flow and a turbulent flow. These are terms you'll often hear in, in industry when you're working with uh, fluids and uh, hydraulics and, and other such mechanisms. So. Yeah, eddies, eddies are, are little little currents that kind of go this way, whirls, that's the same thing, right? It's, it's where instead of, instead of things going down a stream nice and smooth, there, there's kind of some turbulence where it's going this way and that way. It's a rougher, it's a rougher water, right? And here's a little illustration of smoke. <clears throat> when the smoke is first coming off, you know, an incense stick or a cigarette, it's kind of smooth, and then as it, as it goes up, it kind of just becomes a mess, right? And then here's just some examples of uh, 
this is our, our planet Jupiter, you know, is upper atmosphere. There's all kinds of storms and, and there's different uh, layers in the atmosphere are going in one direction or another. Here's a moon. Is that a moon? Or maybe that's a turbulent area. It's hard to tell. The great red spot is a big storm that's been on the planet for a long time, right? Okay, Bernoulli's principle. Well, here we have our spring. We all know about springs, right? We just did that on the last test. We have an equilibrium point. You can, you know, uh, stretch it, compress it. You have kinetic energy and potential energy. Harmonic motion, we talked about that. Okay, and again, I'll do problems in a separate session. But we talked about pressure. Pressure, right? Why do airplanes fly? How do they fly? The, the, the wing is in the front. It pulls it. Why does it go up in the air? Now, a helicopter, that kind of makes sense because you can see where that goes up. But how does a plane go up? So here we have, here we show a really good illustration where you have a pipe, but it's narrower in this section. So where it's narrower, so if this pipe, if the water's been flowing for an hour, it's flowing at a constant rate, just flowing, flowing, flowing. If you were to measure the pressure in the wide part, the pressure would be higher than in the narrow part where it's going faster. That seems wrong to a lot of people. A lot of people are going, no, it's faster here. It's going faster, so it should gush out here with a lot more pressure it should. Yeah, 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 and, and the physicists are going, nope, we hear you, but, uh, but the universe doesn't care. The universe doesn't care about your artistic, you know, your artistic sensibilities about how the universe should work. The universe is just rocks and molecules and forces and particles, and it does what it wants, right? It doesn't care what we think. It's up to us to understand the universe, not the other way around, right? So here, where the velocity is greater, there's actually less pressure. It just is that way. So just, just keep that in mind. That's the way it is. Here where there's, here where the velocity is less, you'll have more pressure. Here where the velocity is greater, and it can, you're going to have less pressure. You will. You can do a little experiment with. Uh, blowing over some paper, right? You should all do that. Although, that much toilet paper is worth about 20 bucks right now, right? So, all right. So how does an airplane wing work? Well, the shape of the wing, it's, it's quite complex, but here's a very simplistic explanation. The shape of the wing, right? There's a lift, so we know that airplanes go up. So, the shape of the wing causes the air to move faster across the top. Well, as I just showed you, where, where a fluid, air is a compressible fluid, where it's moving faster, there's less pressure. So the air at the top part of the wing, the way the wing shape causes that air to move faster. So there's less pressure there. There's more pressure on the bottom part and you get lift. That's the whole field of aerodynamics, right? You'll, you'll engineers go in and, and uh, they'll, they'll get degrees just in aerodynamics, right? It's going faster up here. The, the air is flowing slower here. So the pressure is going to be greater here and it's going to push it up. Amazing. That's how it works. If you hear people say, well, we don't know how, why flight really happens, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And now you know too, right? So they call it lift, right? There, there's many different uh, terms for that. But there's a lower pressure on the top of the wing. And then here's just a curveball for you sports enthusiasts. And that is it. That was chapter nine, right? So make sure you read chapter nine and, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll look through the homeworks and uh, we'll do the homework problems later. Have a good one.